it's certainly a bad time for misinformation for men and for women, but I think it's worse for women in exercise science. I think all researchers would agree that women are underrepresented in the literature. And you'll hear that everywhere. I don't think anyone would really contest that. What's happening now on the internet is people are kind of exploiting that to say there's no research in women. You know, so the logical conclusion is it must be completely different for them. And I would caution that jump, right? Because we can have mechanistic data, we can have data in rodent models, and we can have data in men. And I would argue, given the choice, the data in men are more likely to be representative of the physiological adaptations in women than the data that's coming from the mice. One of the reasons that it's difficult to do research in women, and I think why not a lot of people do, uh, and also why it's easy to kind of exploit this with communication and information on the internet, is because women have these different hormone profiles, which could potentially affect adaptations to exercise. And those hormones change either throughout the menstrual cycle or with the introduction of a hormonal contraceptive during pregnancy and during the menopause transition. And this means that either objectively or subjectively, there are changes going on that are actually physiologically there. But what's happening online is that somehow in the past few years, everything is about your hormones, right? And so the danger there is we're actually not making evidence-based recommendations, but people are more likely to believe them because they're aware of the hormonal changes that their body is going through, whether it's acutely for a few days throughout a menstrual cycle or longer term for a couple of years during perimenopause.